Oh really? I mean, if you're, if, if you're if you're trying to get a couple of levels in before the season ends, I mean, I'm down. I'm also down tomorrow at some point. I don't know if they've announced the date or rather the time of the uh, season switching. But if there's like an event to close the season or to open the season, I'm down oh, to stream. Text that. me tomorrow. Text me if there is tomorrow because I a man has a day off, so I'll be able to jump on most likely. Yeah. A man who leaves in fucking three days, I get the kids by myself. Oh no. Uh, yeah, it's a nightmare. So maybe this is the wrong episode to bring this up on because we're not even into October yet. But we're kind of—I mean—we're in the fall, basically. I don't know when when a fall officially starts, but today feels like fall in Massachusetts. I'll, I'll give it oh, that. I love it. It's love so it. great. It's so great. Um, especially after the summer we had, I'm fucking ready for this cooler weather to be around for a bit. You know, we're gonna get we're gonna get like a hundred degree day next week or the weekend. Probably. Really? I mean, yeah, that's that's the reality. Um, but Mike and I were talking earlier. And there was this, <laughs> there was this one Halloween when, when when Jen and I were still at our apartment in Salem, where we were do, giving out trick or treat candy to like you know whatever the people trick or treating, and they, they at one point like we were doing trick or treating, and Mike and I were also playing Smash in the living room, and in the apartment the living room was the front room of the house, so this fucking little kid comes up trick or treat. And, like, could give a fuck less about the candy. He just looks inside and he goes, are you guys playing Super Smash Brothers? And then he just comes in my house and starts playing Super Smash Brothers. He, like, picks up a <laughs> controller. And I'm just, like, looking around, like, thank God Jen's here. Because if this is just me and Mike, real fucking weird. But also, like, the kid's parents, like, also, like, came in the door. So, like, I feel like it was a little less weird, but also still very weird. I don't know. Bro, if, if Liam did that, like, man, get the fuck back. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, I, 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 I don't know. Like, I I don't think I'd let my kid walk into a stranger's house, pick up a controller, and just start, like, playing a video game in someone's or, living room. A good joke as a parent would be like, all right, guys, thank you very much. We'll be back in, like, an hour or two. You know, and just <laughs> yeah. and, like, pretend like you're yeah. walking away. Yeah, that would have been I – I feel like I can't remember – that was such a jarring event that happened. I can't remember really anything else about that event. So I don't know what else the parents may have said, but I feel like they didn't, like – joke about it like i feel like they didn't be like that like if they said that it would have been great like oh this is a good time instead i was more like why are why are we still here what are we doing well what would have been great if you were like man you suck get good man you oh know, mike did my, mike mike spiked the shit out of him got up and started mm-hmm. fucking like like fucking showboating he smashed the control he had to buy me a new game controller he smashed the controller <laughs> the ground it was great yeah he took the whole kid's yeah. candy bag he goes money match and he took the whole kid's candy bag it's ridiculous uh, anyways, I don't know. Mike brought that up earlier, and I was like, I can't stop thinking about it because it's fucking absolutely ridiculous. Um, anyways, welcome everyone to the Past Control Podcast, the show where a couple of best friends talk about the latest in video games and nerd culture. Sometimes we have guests, sometimes we talk about trick or treating too much. Either way, we have a new episode for you each and every week. As always, I'm your host, Brendan Groom, and joining me on this lovely Saturday evening is the anime senpai himself, Mr. Michael. Desir, Mike, how are you doing tonight? Mike's a sleepy uh, baby tonight. Do it. I'm, I'm yeah, with him. I need to grab a like a glass of water or something. Yeah, I mean, if you want to skate downstairs real quick and go get yourself a hydration oh, sure. capsule, because I mean, I was not, I was, I was generous with the whiskey and the drinks that you just <laughs> drank. Mm-hmm. You, you also just like downed one before you left my house. Mike, what you should yeah, do is just get on the ground and start trying to be a squid and fucking making your way to get water and just fucking don't, you know, just I'm slowly a inch. Now. <laughs> now. I'm a... That's me. That's me doing like my squid bagging. Uh, yeah. If you want to run, grab a drink while we're doing the intro. Go feel yeah, free. Yeah. While you do your yeah, intro, you, let you me just get go hydrate, out. Mike. Hydration is important. You, you see me? I got my giant flask here of water. Get your flask. You're good. Anyways, also joining us tonight is the fucking I don't know the splat daddy. Why'd you say one? What does that What does that mean, Todd? I told Mike to wait. Oh, oh. He just got... the 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 splat daddy, Todd Gary. How are you doing over there, Todd? 
good. I just uh, overtook you in Xbox achievements. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why that's your thing right now. You didn't, but sure. Good job. Good, good joke. That's why I told Mike to wait. I, I don't know. <laughs> you can probably do it when he gets back. Just do it again when he gets back. He'll laugh. I will. I'll do it, I'll do it like periodically. Okay. Uh, I, I mean, it's nice. Get I'm night. only 600 away. I'm only 600 away right now. Hey, I'm listen. Not like that far. You say the word. I'll put the, I'll put the jump on it. I'll, I'll get another that's, couple hundred. That's, that's, an, that's an easy Peppa Pig uh, fucking <laughs> playthrough right there. You know, See, that's so. that's the thing. Todd just has has his fucking kids play random game pass games to get <laughs> achievements, <laughs> to farm achievements. I, I I like never let him play Xbox. Not that I like. I'm just like, no, not right now, buddy. You know, and then I'm like, ah, oh, fuck it, you can play this. Yeah, play yeah. This quick. is an easy, easy, quick couple hundred. Hop in, hop in there. All those all those games though, he thinks are trash, so even he won't play them. He's got good taste. He's got good taste. Um, like I know it's nice and cool out. Is it sweatshirt weather, Todd? How are the fuck are you not sweating right now? Oh, it's, I don't know. It's like nice in my house, actually. I don't even have the AC on either, and I usually have the AC on nonstop. You're ridiculous. Uh, anyways, Cozy. rounding us out tonight is the Disney Daddy, the true uh, achievement king, Dominic Forty. Dom, how are you doing tonight? I don't understand what the true achievement king <laughs> I'm just trying to make Bob Mike laugh. I'm just trying to make Mike laugh. I mean, I, that was bold choice because I, I I barely walked into the room when you were saying that. I, I thought, for some reason, when I saw you in, and I was like, oh, perfect, Mike's here. Forgetting that you had to also put headphones on before you could hear anything. So I was like like stalling. Like, uh, yeah, you know, Mike's here. Anyways, wonderful. We got a great show for you tonight, as always. Uh, this episode of the Past the Control podcast is sponsored by our good friends at Goodnight Fatty. If you're in the Salem, Massachusetts area on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday evening, you want yourself something hot, something sweet, something tasty, something fresh out of the oven, you can head on down to One Washington Square, get yourself a delicious fatty. And if you're unaware of what a fatty is, you can educate yourself on those tasty treats by heading over to their Instagram page at Goodnight Fatty, giving them a follow, checking out their posts. You will not be disappointed. Uh, Mike, how are the fatties tonight? Because I know you just had your chance to get a couple of bites in. I mean, I ate, I ate one of the cookies. It was pretty good. Which one did you have? Uh, let's see. It wasn't the caramel one. It wasn't the pumpkin spice. So it must have been the, the third one. Whatever the third one was. Okay. All right. Were you a fan? It was. I haven't had a By the way, that bag ripped on my way home. Wait, did it really? It it like it ripped almost immediately. Did the drinks like, explode? Got... No, no, no. So what happened was one of the handles ripped off. Yeah. So like, it was just hanging by one handle. It's like, all right, this is not gonna survive the entire trip. So I moved the Brodies to like the like the pouch that I actually have on my bag. Yeah. I mean, probably a smart idea because it's a glass bottle. It's a glass bottle, and then I put everything else into a different pocket. Okay. 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 Were you on the scooter? Yeah. I wasn't. Yeah, you wouldn't drive a car through Salem in fucking September? No way. This is nice. This is nice scooter weather. So it is nice scooter weather. The other day, I actually used my scooter to go. There's like a bike trail that I think that goes from Salem into Marblehead. That makes like, sense. I don't know. Yeah. I, like I used it to go there. I probably could have gone further, but I didn't see where like the rest of the trail went. You scooted on a bike path. Yes. Mike's fucking breaking fucking the rules. Rebel. You fucking <laughs> rebel. I can't believe you do this, Mike. Listen, I have an electric bike, too. I could have used that, but, like, I've, I've, I'm gonna call I've the been cops. a little disappointed on the, uh, can... on the battery power on that thing. Can you get a ticket on a scooter for doing something like that, Mike? Probably. I mean, mm -hmm. for being on a bike path, probably not. What what is are there scooter rules, Mike? Are you only supposed to use it in like? Are you only supposed to like be in specific spots with it? Like, can you scoot on the street, or is that like against rules? the rule? If there are you, scooter you rules, can't... no one's given them to me. No, I believe you can't charge a scooter after midnight. If not, it turns into like a moped. <laughs> yeah, and you like can't that, get them so. wet. You can't get them wet. <laughs> you can't have them wet. What's the third one? <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't like gremlins. You guys are. Losing me. Gremlins is top tier. Yeah. Top yeah. Tier. Has it gotten everyone Next back into multiverses? I don't think so. Don't worry. Gremlins I haven't played anything. I've, I've like basically only played Splatoon at this point. I've really not. Yeah, played I told you, multiverse is dead game. I'm glad you spent money on it. Last of Us remake Splatoon. No, I mean fucking 
Multiverses, I'll get right back. And when you guys were just talking about spiking that little kid, I was like, fuck, I want to spike these. Whoa, 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 whoa. We didn't spike any. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes, yeah. Mike Mike spiked the kid in the game and then spiked my oh, controller. Yeah. He didn't, like, pick up a kid and spike him like a football. We would never we would never do something like that. I mean, I can't speak for Mike. Oh. But. Yeah. You can go either way. Okay. Okay. That's fair. A uh, couple other housekeeping things. The PTC movie movie club pick for September is my pick, and again, didn't write the name of the movie down in the notes, so I don't. Remember. Every time, yeah, you um, it is a life. No, hold on. A life unknown. Jet, no, Jen, life what's aquatic. the name of the Paul Rudd movie? I forget again. Yeah. Life Aquatic. There it is. Steve Zizzer. Oh, it's Clueless. Just Google it. Ugh, Jen was supposed to yell the answer up. It's a uh, Ant Man. Paul Ed Rudd, Selena Gomez movie. The Fundamentals of Caring. Let me just, before I forget, next week. The have you funda- seen the movie before? No. I try, I'm, I'm trying to pick movies that I have not seen, that none no, of us have good. seen. Yeah. Um, the Fundamentals of I Caring. Have a, gotcha. I have, I have like so many movies that I'm mulling around in my brain for my next pick, and I, every time I go to make my pick, it's none of the movies I've been thinking about. Make a list in your like, phone. Like, I have a list in my phone of movies I'm rolling around through. Um... So yeah, if you want to hear us talk about the fundamentals of caring, which is a next a Netflix movie, so that uh, you need to watch that on Netflix, or you know, if you watch it in some other way, you do you. But it is a Netflix original movie, so it is streaming on Netflix. Um, that is our movie for the month. So we'll be talking about that the last episode of the month, which I don't think is next week. Is it in two more weeks? I don't know how September no, rolls out. So. Get two weeks? Yeah, we five two weeks. weeks in September. Two weeks. So we'll be talking about that at the end of the month. Uh, I think for other housekeeping stuff, really just, uh, you know, follow us on social media, subscribe to us on your favorite podcast platform. If you're not already doing that, if you're watching this on Twitch, you know, throw us a subscription, throw us a five star review. If you do listen to us on podcast platform, you know, take a moment this week, please take it right now, pause the show or keep the show playing and just, you know, throw us a quick five star review, leave us something nice on there, wherever you listen to podcasts, it really helps us grow the show. It helps more people find the show and it helps, uh, you know just helps overall with the show continuing to grow and do great things for all of you out there. Anyways. Call us out for our foul language, you know? All that yeah, stuff. yeah, exactly. Um, anyways, we, uh, we've we been playing some stuff. Other than Splatoon, anyone else got some things they want to chat about? Uh, no. I honestly, just that Last of Us remake, I think, might, after playing this, might Inch out Bioshock is my overall favorite game of all time. Wow, it's, it's close. It's very wow. close. Oh, wow, like just just revisiting Last of Us again, making you realize Last of Us is your favorite game, or specifically the remake is doing something for you. So the first part and the second part, like the I th- I just really enjoy like the gunplay. Like it's just fucking. I, I mean, it's it's pretty similar to the first, but it just feels better in some ways. The AI feels better. Um, yeah, it's just like it's. Uh, and I forgot so much. I've played like Last of Us probably three times, but I haven't played it like since we did that podcast, whatever that was like yeah. three years ago. Maybe? I mean, that's Four the first ago? and only time I played the game was yeah. we played it and during the uh, first year of COVID. Oh, we did that podcast on it. Um, I'm enjoying this game like I played it my first time right now. It's it's pretty much yeah. playing the remake is making me feel like the first time I played it. I I will say like I played it for the first time in 2020 when we did the the episode of the podcast on it uh, leading up to the second game coming out and. You know, I didn't know anything about the game, any spoilers or anything like that. And I, I love the game. And I will say, like, a few years later now, you know, playing this game again, there is so much little, not even little, there there are just, like, there are just large portions of this game that somehow escaped my memory. Where I skipped a lot of that optional dialogue stuff, like, with, like, aliens things and, like, like stuff like that. I yeah, mean, I, I, totally I, I don't think I was skipping it intentionally, but now I am definitely no, seeking it out. Like, I'm looking for it. But I will also say this, too. Like, whenever I see someone tweet something like, oh, uh, you know, if you could if you could erase your memory of one game and replay it for the first time, what would it be? I'm now thinking, okay, I played Last of Us for the first time two years ago, and I have already clearly forgotten many things about <laughs> right. this game. Maybe the answers that I would give to that question, I actually could play it again and be like, oh, no, like, I did forget this happened and enjoy right. it again. So, uh it's kind of making me rethink playing some older games that I love that I'm like, you know what, let me fucking get in here again. How how uh where where where's an update on where you're at, Dom, with uh Last of Us Part One? 
I'm in the sewers after Pittsburgh. Oh, okay. So you're you're almost uh, you're near the end of that chapter. You're near the end of the, that part of the game. So I'm yeah. definitely when, whenever you do finish that, text me. I'm curious what you think of how that wraps itself up. Wait, is that where we just got out of? Or no, I, I'm trying to think because I'm pretty far in it now. I'm the, like the the part that Dom is at is the end of Philadelphia. Okay. Um. End of Philadelphia. I thought it was Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Or sorry, I I meant Pennsylvania. I meant Pennsylvania. I always confuse okay. the state with the city. Uh, yeah, the 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 section that Dom is in will will conclude Pennsylvania. Uh, I'm just laughing because there there was an entire like portion of an It's Always Sunny episode where Charlie <laughs> was trying to like learn that Philadelphia and Pennsylvania were not the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it it. it as someone who, I mean, I guess, are they from? Are they all from there? Is that like the premise of the show, or only one of them, or portion of them? In the show, they're all the from. Premise there. of the show, I know, but, they're all but from aren't, there, but aren't but realistically, like premise the of the show, like, they don't leave there. Like, yeah, but aren't right. aren't they're some right. of them actually from there, or all of them? No, Charlie Day's from from uh, Rhode Island. Interesting. At least one of them is from there, right? Uh, Rob McElhaney Rob McElhaney is probably okay. from there. Yeah, I, I there. thought that yeah, it was like loosely there. based on like some sort of like certain experiences. Obviously, that show is fucking super fantastical. It's not like fucking based on anything. Uh, but isn't it like based on a real bar or something that he would go I mean, to? Patty's McElhaney owns a bar in Philadelphia, but that's but after I the fact, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, maybe I'm conflating all the stories then. But uh yeah, the the, the you, you are at the end of the the summer section of that game. So I'm curious to see how that how you feel about the end of that. Um but I mean if you've been listening to the last few episodes where we kind of talked about revisiting the last of us for me and Dom and Dom uh me and Todd and Dom playing the last of us for the first time. When Dom fin- finishes the last of us, um we will we will just Mike finish. Mike finished. Yeah, when I finish. Yes. When, I mean, Mike when finished. The Last of Us finished The Last of Us. I mean, it did... I like how like we were like, we need four months to do this game, and then like all three of us are going to be like done probably in like a couple weeks. I mean, it's it's a fantastic game, and it's not that long of a game. Like you can you can bang through it pretty quickly. I mean, Dom's playing on the second hardest. He's not playing on grounded. He's playing on whatever is below that. So I am surprised that he's survivalist. Yeah, making. Yeah, it... how, you, how you find any difficulty? It fucking sucks. Yeah. Oh, so there's so funny. there's no ammo. So I was telling, you like, yeah, I'm dealing with that. I'm playing on yeah. that one right now for the remake, right. but yeah. the AI has been like tweaked, so I'm finding it way easier than the one that you're oh, really? playing right now. Yeah, like it's like I'm just like headshotting everyone like with like the three bullets I have, and oh, really? I don't headshot. Like, yeah, it's it's definitely like I do. I I was we, I was weirded out. I'm like, this is supposed to be the hardest difficulty. I'm ripping through this game right now. Yeah, and then I apparently I read that the AI is just like makes it easier because it's not as chaotic. I feel like I feel like realistically Mike is not going to play this game so I might Oh no he's not. I'm I might uh I might have him come over b- before I play more of it and just watch a recap video of what I've played so far and then have him watch me play through the rest of the game. It feels like a game that you could just have him watch. Yeah. Like a YouTube compilation of all the cutscenes. Yeah. yeah, I mean, f- the gameplay segments. I mean, there are some things. He's gonna obviously... miss out on the the Joel and Ellie conversations and yeah. stuff, but but I think you can still get a gist of things. Um, and I I think just being in the moment of those some of certain scenes of playing the game and that tension going between cutscenes, I think probably adds a little bit to the. Like for me, I don't think the gameplay in Last of Us is necessarily bad. But I will say there's definitely points where I'm like, I, I am yearning to get to the next, like, story beat. I am, like, cannot wait to see the next, you know, cutscene or whatever it may be. Uh, and very few games do that to me. Most games, it's the opposite. I'm like, all right, can we get this as a fucking cutscene? Like, I just want to get back to playing this game where it's kind of the opposite here, which is normally not how I play video games. Um, which is why I think overall Last of Us is really special to me is that, like, it's one of the few video games where I really care about the story, uh, where I typically care more about gameplay in l- mostly any video game that I play. That's because it's the goat. The goat, <laughs> <baby>. <laughs> um, so yeah. So it's, I, 
I think another part of the... I guess just proving that point is like all of the collectibles are also telling a story. Like yes. they're telling you how they got like how you got to the point where yeah. civilization is at. And I feel like in most games, like optional like pickups and stuff that like you know, maybe they flesh out the environment. They're usually I honestly just like, don't fucking read them, to be honest. I'm they're usually glad... just Easter eggs or yeah. like yeah. I'm where... glad Dom just mentioned that because like I picked up something and I must have just been cruising through this game before. Like obviously paying attention to the story, but like not the, the little things. Yeah. And it was a pamphlet of what like this a scientific pamphlet that I picked up basically saying all the fi- the stages of the virus and like what to look out. And I was like, I don't remember ever picking this up and being like, yeah. I was just probably like, yeah, it's a piece of paper. Let me pull yeah. it in my backpack. Okay, I mean, honestly, even the first time that I played through when we were leading up to those bo- both games, leading up to both podcasts, I was, you know, like not really paying attention to a lot of that stuff because typically I don't do that in video games. But in this playthrough of the remake of part one, I'm like, Everything I pick up, I am reading it, and I'm like, yeah, same. Interesting. Like, there's like, you know, you're in a, someone's house and like reading a note, and if you like, you know, find another note in another part of the house, it's like telling another mini story, like of things going on, like with this family that you don't know, you'll never meet in the game. And I'm just like, right. okay, there's there's some interesting world building that's there if you want it, and I'm sure other games do have that, but I normally just you know tend to skip over that stuff because that's not why I'm there. Whenever there's like pamphlets and shit like that, I, and or like yeah. letters, and like I'm like, yeah, whatever. I, but I was, I'm at the university right now, and I'm like reading all the stuff. Yeah, like, oh, there's probably a lot of good stuff there. Yeah, I, I will say, I think that's why the Fallout games hit for a lot of people because there's so much shit to fucking read. And I think, yeah. not personally experiencing it, but I think a lot of people would say, like, oh, the Fallout games do a really good job of like building a world within the world through like the terminals and all that other shit. But I just don't want to, I just don't want to fucking do that. I just want to fucking, I want to go back to Fallout three actually. Now that you bring that up, I haven't played that game. So I mean, I'm, I'm, I am down. If you want to like, again, after we finish the last of us, however, the future of the, this like light video game club thing works. I think the best form of it can just be like the, the three and or four of us coming up with like, Hey, What's a game that like we'd all like to play, and then just like put a loose a loose timeline around it and just play the game? Uh, Garfield lasagna party. <laughs> I mean, that's Korea. a given. That's a given. Yeah, that's uh, a... But like, I... I need to get I need to make sure I get all the collectibles because I really want to know the story <laughs> of that game. <laughs> you gotta get every strand of pasta. Like, I I don't necessarily like. I love Last of Us Two as well, but I don't necessarily have a want to play that game. But if like. If Dom's reception of the first game is good and we have a good podcast about it and he is interested in playing the second game, like that might tempt me to just play the game again. Oh, I, I told you I mean, Sam. I'm, I'm going right into two after one. Like, I'm replaying it. I will unfortunately probably be jumping to God of War after this. That's cause... fine. Yeah. And, and, and yeah, right. honestly, if we want to make that like a little mini push before Ragnarok comes out, I'm down to play God of War. I should probably um, make myself play it, so... Don't I'll replay God of War. I would love to play. I want to replay it before, but don't jump into hard mode on God of War. For, it's not like old school God of Wars. It's like way, I know. way. I'm still even going medium. There. Even medium though. <laughs> like for me, medium. I had to finish that game. I think I had to turn it down to easy. I could be wrong. Really? Because like I was just getting smoked. And like you, there's these Valkyrie side bosses. You don't even have to fight them. Like, no. you, you you won't even be able to scratch them on like I, I it's I, on medium. I was like, okay, I'm not doing this then. All right, let's just um, move on. I was saying to Mike the other day, Mike, you're muted, by the way. I was saying to Mike the other day that um, I want to replay the old God of War trilogy, too. Or I, would like I guess to there, there's more than three at this point. But I, yeah. I think that there is definitely room, whether it's on like a full all four of us podcast or not, to do breakout podcasts, even if they're just like 30 minutes long. Like I'm down to like like a big thing that I've been debating doing for the last couple of years. And I've been sort of doing it just on my own, not as like a thing to talk about on the podcast is diving into either games and or franchises I've missed or overlooked and like just playing it for myself or Bro, get in the bio. Shop. What the fuck? I mean, that's on the list. Like that, that, I mean, the list is fucking long. Like I want to play, like I loved Mike and I were just talking about this. I love persona five so much that like, I want to play persona three, I want to play Persona 4. I kind of want to dip into the Shin Megami Tensei games. But I mean, like, it's all right. <laughs> but like, I'm down to I'm down to play. I don't know. I, I'm down to play God of War 2018 first, 
I don't know about OG God of War. Did you play any of the old ones? No, never. I've played, I've played right. three. But like, I've if you if you wanted to be like, hey, I, I want to played wanna... the first one. I might have I feel like the, the second one too. I feel like the first one is kind of dated at this point, but I don't. I, yeah. I can't really tell. But like, yeah. Like, but I'm at the point of this, like, where if you sincerely, Dom, was like, I'm gonna play through these three games, I'd say fuck it, I mean, I'll just some fucking point do I'm it. Going to play yeah. Them. So then I'll yeah, I'll just say fucking do it then. Just give me an excuse uh, to play it, you know? Yeah, exactly. Like, like I like the push to we play did, it. If we did 2018 or whatever year that is, God of War, would you play it? Uh, that game seems I mean, more up your alley. Yeah, I feel like I did want to play it at some point. It's a great, great, that was great game. I did want to play it. Uh, yeah. I never got into buying it or anything, but I guess I would play it. Mike, so okay. I'm, I'm probably about either a third of the way through and if not a little bit closer to the halfway point of last of us part one, if I mm-hmm. pulled out a cutscene compilation of the parts of the game that you missed, would you watch that and then come to my house? We'll crack open a couple of drinks and we'll play through we'll, we'll I'll play through part one and you can just fucking hang out. That way you don't have to play the game. I don't know, maybe. I think yeah, you would enjoy the cutscenes. I think I think you would. No, de- no, definitely like the scene when like Joel skull fucking the clicker. That scene is like intense, but like yeah, mm-hmm. feel yeah. like it. That that that's in that's in the DLC. I don't have the DLC. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's t- I mean, there's a lot of actually a lot of JRPGs that I've been trying. Like I have been fucking loving Xenoblade Chronicles three so much to the point where like when I do finish this game, I'm contemplating actually playing one and two to see if i can force myself to enjoy them um but See, like, i could never get into a game like xenoblade because i just think like i find and this is just me like the characters and like the dialogue seems so fucking unlikable for me and like i just don't think i could ever care so, about a story in that from game. what i understand about three compared to the other games is that three is a much different game i think most people are like saying if you didn't like one, two, or X, you might actually like three because it's not. Th- it's like a much different game. I'm really, I am really liking three. But like, there's a lot of things I want to fucking play. Like, I'm in the middle of playing Bayonetta yeah. one right now for the first time because I want to try to beat Bayonetta one and two before three comes out. And I'm fucking loving Bayonetta one to the point where like, I'm mad I never played Bayonetta one because See, this like, game's I fucking amazing. The most recent Devil May Cry is better than the Bayonetta one because I just like the no combat fucking way. way better. No I like the combat fucking way. way better. Than I Devil think May Cry. I, if you love DMC, DMC5, great. I think DM, I DMC5 is like super overrated for what it is. I think, Bayon, I think Bayonetta 1 is way better than DMC5 so far. Um, but anyways, that's that's a lot. But I, but to back to Dom, Dom's original point, I've been dipping into my backlog and I'm definitely down to like make some sort of like across the board like if so any of one of you wants to play something you know if i think it's within my wheelhouse i'm down to fucking play and if you know if two of us play it and we want to get like two other people we know played it onto the show and just do a mini you know a little mini episode on something i'm fucking down i mean i will play anything except for like a 180 hour jrpg because i just don't think i'll be able to find the time yeah. or something like that no, I do you want to play the kingdom hearts five. games with us I mean, I actually <laughs> will play those, but I don't want to play the first one. I don't want to play the first one. Just watch I fucking cutscenes. Listen, if I've learned one is so long, I feel like that's cheating. If, if, but it's no, so long. if if I've learned anything, like you have, you have the purest, in, in these all friends of the show, all great people. I beat you, Kingdom Hearts one. When yeah, so then you're fine. I, just rewatch your recap video. So just watch a recap right? video. You're fine. The game is super dated. I'm Dom and I both played through one. It's fine. It's but it's like super dated, like gameplay was. Um, just watch a fucking recap video of cutscenes. But you have the purist, like Cam Hawkins, friend of the show, who's like, you got to play everything, you got to play in order. And then you have someone like Jesse Vitelli on the original, uh, yeah, on the original platform. Uh, <laughs> and then you have friend of the show uh, Jesse Vitelli, who also loves Kingdom Hearts, but is, you know, uh, I think a little more realistic in saying like, yeah, if you don't want to play fucking Chain of Memories, watch. You know, watch the cutscenes and fucking move on to two, um, etc. And I think that kind of goes for everything. Like I've been kind of debating playing the Trails in the Sky games because I've heard a lot of amazing things about those JRPGs. And like, if I want to play those, I think one, two, and three are only on PC and PS4. 
So it's like accessible, but like I don't really know if I want to sit at my fucking p- play, my my PC to fucking play a long RPG. I'd rather play it on my Switch or something. Uh, but like four and five are both available on the Switch, and I'm like, can I? I was like, Cam, can I just start with four or five? He's like, no fucking way. He's like, you would be so lost, all this stuff. But in my head, I'm kind of like, but if I just played four, and, am I gonna pay attention anyways? Well, it's like it's like to catch up to five. I have to now play, you know, a couple hundred hours of JRPGs to catch up, which I understand. Like, that's just the reality if you're trying to get into something that's sequential. But at the same point, like, you know, what if I just start with four? And if I like four enough that I feel like I need to play one, two, and three, then I go fucking play one, two, and three. Um, I don't know. But yeah, I'm, uh, Tales of Arise is uh, thirty bucks on Xbox right now. I might actually buy that because that's like one game I do want to. If if you committed to playing through that game. If if you catch up to where I am, I'll pick it back up and I'll finish it because that game is really good. I just never finished yeah. it. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's plenty of things I'm I'm down to fucking jump into. I mean, Uncharted's another one that's on my list that I never really played that I'd I'd be like yes. I would love yeah, I would love a reason to play those games. I'll and if one of you all. played them, that would be the reason to get me to play it. We should play them before Indiana Jones the video game comes out. I mean, so like I, don't think, yeah, I don't think that game's coming out anytime soon, but I'm down. Yeah, so we have plenty of time. Yeah, we get plenty of time. Uh, but yeah, I, I know you keep saying God of War, so I'm actually like, I'm on board with God of War. I'm down to, oh, to yeah. that, I'll, when, like, I, when I finish Last of Us, I'll install God of War on my PS5. And I personally think that, that the, re, the remake or the 2018 God of, War, yeah, God of War is like almost as good of a story as Last of Us, the original. It's just fucking has some great moments in it. Like, I hope it's better. Not... This, this fucking story sucks. <laughs> uh, Dom and I did have some extended conversation on the phone about Last of Us, but we'll we'll save that from when we get to an inevitable Last of Us show when Dom finishes the game. Um, Mike jumped away for a second, which is fine, but it does disrupt our our like sort of main topic for the show, which is Splatoon three has come out and I wanted to pose to everyone is Splatoon three. So when I I remember when Splatoon two came out, the big conversation following Splatoon two was, Oh, this is just Splatoon 1.5. And a lot of people, a lot of people discounted that game, which I think is unfair because I really like Splatoon 2. I really like Splatoon 1. I, I, Splatoon's so, fucking great. I, but... I like Splatoon 1 and 2, but I, I do think that the, the, there wasn't enough improvements in the overall quality of life of the game in 2. Yeah. I'm, to... I'm, yes. I mean, that's but that's a that's a thing outside of Splatoon. That's just a problem with Nintendo's like a, attention to online gameplay and stuff. Well, and this is a game that like Splatoon... revolves around online gameplay. Well, I think like an episode or two ago, I was like kind of talk. I was like saying how much I love Splatoon three, but I'm like it's very similar to Splatoon two, and I'm like it's um, you know I think you, you probably remember, but I kind of like want to take back what I said in some regards because well, you I, were talking about Splatoon in regards to when we played the beta, yeah, not not having time yes, with the yeah, full yeah, game, yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. You, okay, I mean, yeah, yeah, fair enough, yeah, yeah. So because like honestly, like being able to play with friends is not perfect. But it is but a lot better. Far better. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's like, it makes it like a lot. It makes it like that much better. Basically. Yeah. It's like, like the, something as simple as that. Not to make excuses for Nintendo because they're a fucking company and we don't need to make excuses for a company or anything yeah, like that. that though. But, but like Nintendo, I think definitely, obviously, very clearly struggles with online for all of their games. But what makes Splatoon specifically. Uh, plagued by these poor online decisions is that like Mario Kart having shitty online sucks, but like the are there are other components to Mario Kart that, you know, kind of help it. Was Mario I feel like Mario Kart's online wasn't terrible. It's fine. It's not bad, but like it's not yeah. great. And it's the same thing with yeah. Smash. Like Smash's online functions, yeah, true, but it's not yeah. great. But like those games can also have like a giant offline presence. And Splatoon does have a single player campaign. It has, you know, other things you can do offline, but the online portion of Splatoon, which is, you know, it is a, you know, for all for a general term, it is an online shooter and it has for one and two had very poor online mechanics. Um 
Splatoon 3 is definitely, in my opinion, fucking streets ahead of that shit. But it's still not great. Like, it's still not perfect. It still has its issues. But it definitely has resolved some of the more glaring hiccups with the online. Like, the fact that we can get on and just kind of seamlessly get into, for the most part, seamlessly yeah. get into each other's matches is a fucking boon. The big thing for me that's still kind of up in the air is Splatfest in the past for the other two games have yeah, also been oh, an man, issue. So, so if that's an issue in this game, I'm going to be fucking frustrated that they still haven't fixed that. But, uh, Mike, w- I was saying before you had got back that like the conversation around Splatoon 2 when it came out was a lot of people saying, well, this is just Splatoon 1.5. It's not a lot of new here. It's a lot of the same, you know, blah, blah, blah. How are you feeling about the jump from two to three so far with our, you know, couple of when a week, week and a half with the game so far? Yeah, I mean, I think all of the besides like, you know, adding new guns and new maps, the real change has been the online stuff, mm-hmm. which has been good. It's definitely been an upgrade. It's not perfect, but it's a step in the right direction. Yeah, it's perfect. perfect. <laughs> yeah. And like uh, Salmon Run, I believe in Splatoon Two was like a not always available thing. Yeah, it was only available like once in a while. In yeah, and like stupid. now it's a mode that's always ac- accessible. They just have it like the multiplayer where the maps rotate and stuff, which is fine, and the weapons rotate, whatever. Um, but I, I, I don't know. Like I maybe I'd have to jump into some Splatoon Two matches and like Salmon Run stuff to like kind of give it a fairer assessment, but. From what I remember in my brain of Splatoon 2 and what I am playing now in Splatoon 3, I feel like Splatoon 3 is just overall like an upgrade across the board. I just think it's like a much better game. And I don't think Splatoon yeah, 2 is a bad game. It's, it's, it's better. Um, but I mean, you could say the same thing about like uh, if we're talking like Splatoon 1, Splatoon 1.5, like it's, it's definitely better if it's, you know a full number upgrade is another discussion I think but it's definitely better. So how how are you feeling like is this a Splatoon 2.5 to you or is this Splatoon 3 or is is it worth it? Like I guess the the main question at heart here for everyone is is Splatoon 3 worth it? I think it's definitely a better game. It's tough for me to say anything more than that because I haven't played Splatoon 2 in a very long time. Yeah. So like I can't I can't be like, oh, you know what? I could just go back to Splatoon 2 and be like the same thing. I'm like, I haven't played Splatoon 2 in a while. So, like, this was definitely the push I needed to get back into the game for at least a little bit. Mm-hmm. What about you, Todd? Is this, do you, do you feel like Splatoon 3 is worth it? Yeah, oh, yeah, 100%. Um, just off of like, just off of Turf War alone, I think it's worth it. But I haven't even dived into all the other stuff that I'm excited, like Salmon Run and fucking. Yeah. The competitive rank, they haven't even touched yet. Like, I, and I don't even need to touch it yet because I'm having such a good time with Turf War. Yeah. Um, and then the single player, like, is something I'll probably never play, but Liam loves it. And yeah, there's, there's a, it's a package deal for people. It's like it, they took, like, three games to piece together everything, and now this finally feels like the complete package of a game. You know, like, it's uh, it's definitely worth the entry point, price entry point. You know, yeah. it's, uh, yeah, I, I think it's, obviously the best one i mean it should be the best one at this point but yeah it's great yeah i mean i i'll i agree with some of that like i i still think splatoon one and two are one and two are great um well like all i played in splatoon one and two was turf war like and maybe a little bit of competitive in two but like other than that like i never touched any of the other stuff because you couldn't really like i'm I'm not like seven one it's like if you're on at two o'clock during the monday you can play and it's like cool i'm at work so i'm not doing that yeah some of that stuff was was bizarre um but i i've dipped into pretty much every part of splatoon 3 except for the card game i haven't touched that yet i Um, I don't even know how to play that (laughs) (laughs) Um, there's a if if you walk around the main hub area there's a spot that has it um but i i've like if this says anything about Splatoon 3, uh, you know, I'll just say this. It's since the game has come out, I have stayed up most nights until like 2 or 3 a.m. playing Splatoon in bed until my Switch is dead. Like, I haven't, I haven't done, done that in a, in a long fucking time for any game. Like, that's ge- like Splatoon 3 right now is giving me like Overwatch 1 vibes of like, I need to play this multiplayer. Like, I need to, I, like, I need to play, but in a healthier way of like, 
we're not super sweaty and if we lose a match whatever like it's it's it sucks that overwatch 2 is not going to do that because like Splatoon oh i don't know about that i'm, I'm definitely going to be I'm, in this i'm not saying for everyone but i don't I, I'm, I, I don't think overwatch 2 is going to do that for a lot of people all right well we don't need to turn this into an overwatch 2 conversation we know no, Todd, no, no, we know yeah. we know two 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 i will absolutely play it I'll play two it wrong, but. Uh, completely you can any day of the week throw a dart at the board one of two things is true for Todd. The MCU sucks and Overwatch 2 sucks. <laughs> so the, the, there you go. The, the, that never, it's evergreen, never changes. Um, but the single player of Splatoon 3 is phenomenal. I really like the single player in the, in the, uh, did one have a single player or two, Mike? I don't remember. Yeah, it did. Okay. It, 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 had, that, yeah, I believe it, it had that training portion, didn't it? Yeah, I feel like that's what the single player was. Yeah, did it, it was like just did it not have a story. Just mode? Doing missions for the professor. Yeah, I think. I'm pretty sure it had a story mode. Okay, well, did it? Re- regardless, I really enjoyed that Splatoon sure. 2 story mode was really good. I never played the expansion, but I know people who have played it that have I loved the expansion. But the story mode was good too. But story mode here is fantastic. I'm really enjoying it. Salmon Run in this game is fucking phenomenal. I'm really enjoying it. It's very snappy. It's very quick. Short sessions. You get you get the the highs and lows that you need out of it you know, a top of like in-game progression stuff. Turf War and the multiplayer overall is also fucking phenomenal. I'm still low rank and I'm still a low rank in competitive. So I don't know how sweaty the higher tiers get, but so far I've played a few matches of competitive and that also feels great. And I, you know, I feel like the people playing that so far have been, you know, know what they're doing and it's fun to play with people that know what they're doing. Um, yeah, I'm I'm really enjoying it. I can't stop fucking playing it. Like I absolutely think Splatoon three is, is worth it. I think it's uh Nintendo's best effort for an online game probably ever. Um and you know, it's like we said, it's like so fucking unique. Like it's just like well, there's yeah, nothing else out there. Yeah, I mean the, like- the game the game alone itself, like you just said, is so unique. Like there is no other shooter like that like it is a very unique game um where it's kind of like a hero shooter i guess in terms of like you pick your loadout before the match starts and you can't change it so you're kind of like picking a hero of sorts because you have a base weapon a secondary weapon and an ultimate so like it's sort of hero shootery in that regard but then it's also like you're not like yes kills are important and kill management is definitely important to game success like winning a game but it's also heavily reliant on like strategically painting the map um, yeah it's basically overwatch if it was good like <laughs> uh, but r- regardless i'm like i'm loving splatoon 3 i am so happy that this game is out and is doing well and i it seems like so many people we know are playing it which is great like healthy for the game like i i feel like i've well, had so many friend requests from this game i've never had friend yeah. requests on, on fucking any game on Nintendo yeah. ever i'm like what is happening here well it's great too because because this game Again, which shouldn't be a thing we're praising, but for Nintendo, like, especially with prior Splatoon games, the fact that, like, me, you, and Mike were playing the other day, and then Grayson just hopped in for a few matches, and, like, it didn't have to be a hassle, we didn't have to go back to a lobby, we didn't have to do any of that shit, again, not the normal for, like, other games, but for this game, I know, I know. I'll take it, I'll take it, I'm not complaining. The fact that, that Nintendo, who is historically not good at online games, has this sort of focus of hey we need this game to be the next real big splatoon and we need it to stay you know relevant and stay with a healthy population the way we're gonna fix that is by making this online experience much better and much more palatable and easier to navigate and they've definitely done that and i have high hopes because they did just update the game again there was an update a couple of days ago i didn't read into the details because there was a lot of things included in the update but it seems like some of the things that were in the update were to help the online like play yeah it was for like the drop dropouts yeah kind of thing. so like, like yeah. the fact that they're already a week you know a week or so into the game's release you know looking at that stuff and trying to fix it and update it and maintain it gives me very high hopes that the future of splatoon at least for the next couple of years while they're doing the free updates and splatfest and stuff seem like they're in a good position to like hopefully be you know taken care of and with a game like splatoon 3 being their main you know kind of online you know live user base thing that they have to simulate where smash is done you know mario Kart gets mario kart gets its you know course 
additions, but doesn't need much more else probably outside of that, like balancing and stuff. The fact that they're seeming to focus and take care of Splatoon out of the gate gives me hope that the next few years of Splatoon 3 are going to be, you know, healthy and, and hopefully, you know, supported uh, in a myriad of ways. So that's exciting. I know you haven't had a chance to play Splatoon 3 yet, Dom, um, but you will soon. Are you are you excited to dip into Splatoon 3 or is it kind of just like hanging out in the background of your radar? Um. I don't know. I enjoyed playing Splatoon. I didn't buy Splatoon 2, I don't think. So this would be the perfect time to bounce back into it with this. Like, yeah. Because I think... Like, I, if you, I may I have bought you, Splatoon 2 and never played it. Never played it. <laughs> it's yeah, possible. Right. I, I, it, I may have a sealed copy of it. Somewhere. Yeah. I will say, if, if you're like Dom and you didn't play Splatoon 2... Like, if you've never played Splatoon... Splatoon 3 is like, if you have a Switch, you should be playing this game. If you played Splatoon 1 and skipped Splatoon 2, then, like, I think the jump from 1 to 3 is, like Todd just said, fucking absolutely. Like, if if the concept of Splatoon is, like, your jam, yes, Splatoon 3 is 100% worth your time. Uh, I think so. Um, I'm curious to see how many hours I put into the first week. That's what I'm I mean, on, I honestly, like. I'm with you right there. I am curious to see. I Like, I think Splatoon 3 is going to easily be my, my most hour count switch game like it's gonna blow zelda out of the water it's gonna blow smash out of the water i think it's gonna absolutely take all my hours i don't, like, I, I think monster hunter i'm at like 170 and like Jeez. animal crossing like 300 and like yeah 70, animal so crossing is like, the cool. one to beat for me it's it's over yeah. 300 somewhere it might be cl- I over keep 400 on, like, thinking about animal crossing and just kind of want to dive back into it oh shit i just remembered Mike, there was definitely a close in the app that ended like an hour ago that I wanted to fucking buy. Oh, that's right. You were you were looking at them and you're like, I'm gonna I feel like you like purchased a few of them, right? I think you would only purchase one at a time. I purchased one, but then I didn't turn my game on to buy it. So the other ones probably rotated out of the shop already. Yeah. Anyways. Uh so I think across the board here it seems like Splatoon three is a is a you know, something you should keep an eye on, something you should play if you're feeling feeling into it. I think that's the consensus at this point, a week or so into the game, two weeks into the game. Um, But I guess that brings us to the final portion of the show tonight, which is everyone's favorite part of the night, which is where we play a little game we like to call What's in the Box, Uh, a game where I pull a couple of games off the back of my shelf. I read the back of the box. The panel here has to guess what that game is based on what I read. The first person I get right gets the point. I keep track all year on the score. The scoreboard for 2022 is Dom in first with 45, Todd in second with 40, Mike in third with 31, a bunch of guest points rounding up the board. Uh, But without further ado, let's get right into it with game number one. Is Todd, can you hear us, Todd, or no? Yeah, I'm right here. Todd's Todd's getting it refilled. Todd's hydrating. Game oh, number my second one. Pack. Ooh, make some mayhem. Shoot and um, hold on. What's your mayhem? What's your Oh, hold on. There's a lot of things happening right now. What What did Dom say? <laughs> Dom spoke first. I said, I said total mayhem. <laughs> okay. Is it Overwatch? It's not Overwatch. What did Todd say? <laughs> I said Splatoon, and then I waited, and I said Splatoon. Oh, wait, are we only doing the one guess? I can't remember how we play this anymore. <laughs> you don't remember? What do you mean? No, I well, mean, I that... you can't just, like, ramble off a million things, but yeah. no, it is it is not Splatoon. It is not Splatoon. And Mike. I, and I took a couple seconds, and I said Splatoon 2. It is not Splatoon 2. Mike, what did you say? Okay. <laughs> I said Crackdown 3. Not Crackdown 3. Uh, I will say, for, for our throwback to, I think, last week or the, not the week before, I did say I wanted to pull Splatoon here, but the back of the box for Splatoon is literally, like, Ink your squink. And it's like, yeah, you can't. Yeah, I can't read ink that. Ink your squink? Yeah, ink, ink your squink. Yeah. Squink um, is a mechanic in the game. Yeah. Make some mayhem. Shoot and blank your way through a mayhem fueled adventure. Play solo or co op as one of four unique blank blank. Score loads of blank and save the galaxy. Payday. What? I said payday. Not payday. And save the galaxy from from a fanatical threat. Face ruthless baddies, customize your playstyle, and discover extraordinary worlds. Guardians of the Galaxy? Incorrect. What did you say, Todd? I just feel like we should all know this. It seems like yeah. it's like a very easy one. 
Uh, I, I can't think of anything. You de- you got all of you definitely know this game. It is a game in my hand that is open. I was say, like if you're playing, Wait, what was you're the game? What doing was the game what's in the boss of the game that's not in your hand? Make some mayhem. Shoot and blank your way through a mayhem fueled adventure. Play solo or co op as one of four unique blank blank, score loads of loot, and save the galaxy from a fanatical threat. Face ruthless baddies, customize your playstyle, and discover extraordinary worlds. Destiny 2? Incorrect. Destiny? Incorrect. We've <laughs> we've, we've done Destiny before. I think the back of the box for Destiny says become legend or something. Yeah, yeah we did do that. Yeah. I had to take a guess. Wait, did we say yeah. it, it said it was single player or co-op? Or co-op. Or it, yes. It is, okay. Huh. Yeah, but I feel like this should be easy. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Well, it definitely should is. Be. It's only four pe- four characters too. You can choose from. That's not a lot. That's to like narrow it down. Mm-hmm. 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 Oh, I forgot about the four characters thing. Yeah, that's like the. I was gonna say Rainbow Six Siege, and then I was like, wait, no. But we... And then it's like you know, not uh, tro- yeah, galactic. four different worlds that yeah, not tropical galactic, freeze. Yeah. Yeah. Incorrect. I don't remember if that took place on the island or not. Um, this game is available. Mario 3D World? Incorrect. This game is available on Mac, PC, Stadia, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Series X, and S. No hmm. Nintendo? No Nintendo. And you said it's not Guardians, right? Correct. It originally launched on Windows, Mac, PS4, Xbox One. Someone's clicking for me on this. I don't know. Not a lot of games are on the Mac. Make some mayhem shoot and loot your way through a mayhem fueled adventure play solo or borderlands 3 it is indeed borderlands 3 okay there's a reason why i omitted loot well i was gonna mayhem finally clicked in my head i was gonna say agents of mayhem i'm like but that's too easy that wouldn't be like the case he he, if he if he um censored the last week he would have definitely censored mayhem right (laughs) yeah Dom gets the point. Game number two. Borderlands 3 was my least favorite Borderlands. Hands down, that game was fucking trash. So Borderlands 2? 3. Oh. That was 3, right? Uh, yeah. yeah, that was 3, yeah. Borderlands 2 is, like, I think one of the best. Oh, Borderlands 2. Borderlands 2 might be, like, in my top 25 of all time. It's, I was just going to say. I was just going to say the same thing. Like, top 25. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. Uh, Borderlands 3 is not like Borderlands 3 is has its issues. I really liked the game like I like the gameplay loop of Borderlands. So like Borderlands 3 was fine. I finished the game. Like I it I just didn't do enough to change what Yeah. I mean did. it was definitely old. It was definitely and then outdated. And it was like a downgraded story. Like on, I mean I don't really care but yeah, humor, it was fine. Actually, yeah. yeah, it was it was fine whatever like it, I enjoyed it enough to finish it. I actually really want to still I finish Tiny finish Tina. It. I want to finish Tiny Tina. I I I actually like Tiny Tina more than Borderlands 3. Like a lot. More. Oh yeah, I think it's way better. Yeah, um, explore an alien world with the help of your blank army. Basic reading availability is needed to fully enjoy this game. Take command of three blank explorers, and a lead. Pikmin. It is not Pikmin. Pikmin two. I was gonna say Pikmin two. It is not Pikmin two. Pikmin three. It is indeed. Pikmin three. Damn. Damn. <laughs> Damn. Todd gets the point. Because, that puts it... after that second guess, they're like, oh, it's clearly not Pikmin. I'm like, yeah, fuck it. I'll throw it out there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh man, that's too funny. I've gotten like two of those the last couple of weeks. <laughs> I just like scoop it up after. <laughs> Game number three. A desperate. See, Dom's... Uh huh. I was gonna say Dom's paying attention to what went on last week, and I'm not. And like, <laughs> and using that to think about what you're gonna pick out. <laughs> A desperate enemy, a desperate war. In this blank installment of the epic blank trilogy, the, huh? Halo Infinite. Halo Infinite. That's not a trilogy, right? That's like oh, he said trilogy. Oh fuck! I, I said it before you said. I think I said it before you said trilogy. So. Uh, oh, wait, it is not Halo Infinite. <laughs> In this. Blank installment of the epic blank trilogy. The war is reaching its climax, and blank blank's mission to stop the blank. Halo three. Mass Effect three. It is indeed Halo three. There you go. Thank you, Todd. We'll swap that. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, the way Brendan, the way Brendan was like didn't say anything, and then Mike said Halo's not a trilogy, and I was like, wait a second. At one point, it was a trilogy. <laughs> at one point, yes. At one point, there was definitely just three games out. So yes, that that does right. check out. So that concludes the three games. But I have a bonus game today, and we're gonna do it a little bit differently because this, uh, I guess, clue. This game does not have a box. So I'm going to read some information about this game. Never. Mm, probably never. I don't know. Okay. Um, I'm going to read some information about this game, and the first person to get this game gets the point. Blank is a tiny puzzle that grows on you. You can play it forever, and it'll always be in your pocket. Explore our tiny blanks deep challenge and grow your mind beyond imagination. Optimized for iOS 7 and a universal app for iPhone and iPads. Remember, it's tiny, so it should run even on a finely aged device. What's iOS 7? Where are we at right now with iOS? 16. 16 just came out. Accolades. 2014 Apple Design Award winner. 2014 IGF Excellence in Design Honorable Mention. I feel like it has something to do with being small, but I can't really tell. It's tiny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> tiny. tiny. I am going to pull up the IGN review and read some snippets. It's tiny. Blank is a brilliant puzzle game that can pass. Baba is you. No. Blank is a brilliant puzzle game that can pass spare minutes, hours, or pretty much however long you've got. Its simple blank mechanics take only moments to learn, but training yourself to see several moves ahead while anticipating the possible variables is a challenge that's gripped the puzzle center of my brain as tightly as classics like Tetris ever did. An unexpected. Might throw out a guess. Oh, yeah. No, finish that line. Go ahead, throw your guess, oh, Mike. Man. Mike, you don't want to give someone else an, an answer. Throw out your guess. Let me, let me, let me hear the rest of that sentence. Just say, just say, just say your guess. Just say your guess. I'm going to say threes. Mike, say threes you got the fucking threes. point, baby. It is indeed threes. I never even heard of that. 2014, huh? What is threes? It's, a like, it it's like a huge that. mobile game that, like, it, it's a fantastic game. It's a great puzzle game. Uh, I, I, I can't play mobile games. It's fucking trash. Um, I will say there was a meta to this week's game because this is episode 333, which I made a point of saying at the beginning of the episode so the three of you could potentially piece that together. I the, didn't. The three games were third installments, and then 333 threes was the bonus. 
Guys, game. just a heads up. Episode 343 is going to be all Halo games developed by 343. <laughs> I'm so pretty just... sure we've already done that, but uh, I I wanted a, yeah. I want I wanted a 333 tied meta tonight, so uh I also just wanted a reason to include threes because that game fucking rules. So I haven't played it in a long time. I have never even heard of that game. Like you're fucking up. Like for mobile games, it's got to be like the, one of the best mobile games ever made. There is no point when I would ever pick up my phone to play a mobile game, and it's not like anything against the game. It's just that like if I'm using my phone, it's probably fucking for like work maybe or like apparently threes is also on Xbox, which I did not know. Oh, let's go. Easy achievements. I mean, if it's on there, I might download oh, it. See what yeah, the achievements I just overtook like. your achievement score. Oh, shit. At the end of the show, wow. I feel like there were achievements in threes, even on iOS. There might have, yeah, it might have been tied to like Microsoft, like something. Because I feel like when you got to a certain like block, it would like pop up as like, oh, you, this is the first time you've seen this block. Oh, it might maybe just like in game achievements and stuff. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they probably have achievements on the Xbox version. I didn't know it was on Xbox. I don't think so. That's interesting. But so that doesn't count then, since you didn't know that. So you fucked us all over. Yeah. Well, Mike got the point. So that ends the week with Dom at forty-seven, Todd at forty-one, and Mike at thirty-two. Uh, thank you all so much for listening to this week's episode, episode three thirty-three. We appreciate you. We love you. Do all the things. Be a good person. Uh, leave us a review. It'd be really beneficial. And uh, we'll see you next time.